Hey, I started my new options account this week. I'm excited to show you what happened there. And I'm going to show you an update on the portfolio. But more importantly, I want to walk through what I've learned this week, not only about the rewards of options, but the risks associated with them. If you want to hear more about that, stay tuned. Hey guys, Kevin Burgess back yet again with another video. I'm excited about this because I've learned a lot about options this week, especially about the risks of options. And I want to share all of that with you. If you're looking for a channel who's just going to give you the stocks to buy and you're going to go and you're going to buy some of those shares, uh, you know, this is probably not the channel for you. One of the things that I like to do is actually teach you what I either have learned already or am learning at the moment. So this video is going to be really about learning about options, not about the options themselves. So hopefully you're okay with that. I entered into three options transactions you'll see here in a little bit, and all of them expired this week, uh, what they consider to be worthless, right? So, so I made about $100 uh, this week, but I want to show you some details about that, that there is a significant reward for options, but there's also a significant risk. And I want to show you some slides and some pictures that will help kind of nail that home so that when you sell an option, when you sell a put or a call, you really will understand what the risk is that you're getting into. If you followed me for a while, you know that I have three accounts. I have a dividend income account, which focuses on higher yield, less growth dividend. And then I have a dividend growth account, which focuses more on dividend growth than dividend yield. And then I have a dividend snowball account, which is really intended for people who have, or are just starting out and have a long runway. So this particular portfolio uh, helps folks who are just starting out. So I'm going to give an update on those portfolios. We're going to talk about the options transactions, but then we're going to really get into the meat of it, which is the risk associated with options. So with that being said, let's get started. So the performance of the portfolio this week, you'll see that I have these three accounts here, the dividend income account, the dividend growth account, and the dividend snowball account. And what's interesting here is that the S&P, uh, what I consider the market, the S&P 500, went down 1.6%. Our overall portfolio went down only 0.7%. But if you look at the dividend income account, it went up. 0.6%. Now this 0.6% excludes any dividends or options that I did in this account. So we had a pretty good week in the dividend income account, pretty much a standard week compared to the market and the dividend growth. And we really faltered in the dividend snowball account. So let's go take a look at some things that might've caused that. But when I look at the dividend income portfolio, which is, as you recall, is the one that actually went up this week, you can see where some of the big winners were. Uh, Altria Group went up 5.6%. That's pretty big gain. Prudential, which I own quite a few shares of, it was up almost 4%. Abvi was up 3%. Pinnacle West was up 1.3%. So overall, th there was a lot of gains in, in this particular portfolio. The worst performance of the week was Hess Midstream, which was down 3.5%. So in the dividend growth portfolio, you'll see that Pepsi was the biggest performer. They went up 5.3%. If you recall, Pepsi actually uh, reported earnings this past week, and they were a good earnings as well as a good guidance for the future. So they went up about 5.3%. Johnson & Johnson was up. Aflac um, Cummins was up. Whirlpool was actually up, and so was uh, Air Products. And then moving down to the bottom, you'll see that we had quite a few that were down. Lockheed Martin was down by, you know, 3.6%. Lowe's was down about 4%. EOG was down about 5%. Then we get into the chip sector. Texas Instruments was down about almost 7%. And SOX, which is an ETF of chip stocks, was down about 8%. Then moving on to the Snowball account, you can see that SCHD was the best performer here, but we also have SOX in this, and it was down 8.34%, so it didn't fare so well in, in this portfolio. Microsoft was down, Google was down, Starbucks was down, so a pretty rough week for the Dividend Snowball portfolio. 
Okay, to finish up with the portfolio update, the overall portfolio was down 0.7% compared to the S&P 500 of 1.6%. It's not so bad. We got $1,090 in dividends this week. And you'll notice that I've got an option premium here of $62.31. So I've been selling some call options, some covered calls on 100 shares of Best Buy that I have. So each week I'm pulling in a little extra income from those shares. So where does that put us year to date? It puts us at a 13.1% uh, down for the year compared to the market at 25.3%. But, I mean, look at these dividends, $22,435.44. Hey, I, I can't really complain about that at all. So when I look at the total return, I'm down this, this week, year to date, about 10.3%. But compared to the rest of the market, hey, I, I'll take that. So now I want to take you into this new options account, show you the options that I bought, and then talk really about what the rewards of those options are and what the risks are. I think it's important to understand the risks. So let's dive in. So this new account is a Roth IRA and it's got about $32,000 in it. I wanted to do something a little different with that and learn more about options. So I am focusing that IRA strictly on options. So to kind of get everything started this week, I picked three stocks. Bank of America, Cisco Systems, and Medtronics. And I picked some strike prices where I wouldn't mind owning these stocks. And then I picked the expiration of 1014, which was only one week. And so I ended up with put premiums of 21, 26, and $48. So a total of about $96 in premiums this week. Anytime that you sell a put, your brokerage will set aside a cash reserve to be able to buy 100 shares at the strike price. So on Bank of America, the strike price was 29. To buy 100 shares, I would need $2,900. The brokerage will set aside $2,900 and I get a premium fee for selling that option. So when I take $2,900 for one week that is tied up and I use the income of the 2131, I get a return of 0.73%. If I annualize that, that's a 39.2% annualized rate of return. And you can see Cisco was 35%, Medtronic was 31%. So those percentages are pretty good on an annual basis. I mean, who wouldn't want an over 30% return? I mean, 38%, 35%, 31%, overall 34%. That's a pretty good reward for options. But you know, if there's this much reward out there, there has to be risk. And I want to share with you today what those risks are, at least from my perspective. I've got some charts here, so I'm going to take it really slow. So the first chart here shows the value of the cash secured put that I sold for Medtronics at differing stock prices. So you can see the stock price, the, the strike price was $80. So if it stays above $80, I basically end up with the premium. But if it goes below $80, they assign me the shares. So I actually will buy Medtronic's shares. And if that share price goes down uh, to 70, you can see that I'm sitting here about a $950 loss. Now, let's look at this in comparison to what if I had just bought the shares at that time. And you can see that the share price for Medtronic was around $82 a share when I entered into the, to the cash secured put. So if I had bought it at $82, I would have paid $8,200 for it. And if the share price had gone up to $90, you can see the gain that I would have. If the share price went down to $70, then that gives me a $1,200 loss, basically. $82 minus $70 is $12 a share times 100 shares is $1,200. So here's where we really get to have some fun. You can see that the areas that really matter to us are the differences between these, these graphs. Now in the middle section here, I call this the sweet spot. If, if, this, if this stock trades in this range, we can make money all day long and this is where the reward is, is inside this box. But what happens if it goes outside the box? 
If it shoots up in value and goes to $90, I call this opportunity cost. You won't really feel this because the, the stock will shoot up. You don't have the shares, but you did get your premium in the option. And, and so these are these are rewards that just you will never see because you never owned the shares. So this is one side of the risk is that if the stock goes way up, you don't get to capture this opportunity uh, value here on the right-hand side. Now, the area between the two lines uh, as the stock goes down, I call risk mitigation. And basically, if the stock's trading at 82, we sell a put uh, with a strike price of $80, then if the stock price drops below $80, we're going to own it at $80. So it's a, it's a $2 risk mitigation, basically, as the stock goes all the way down. You don't lose as much money on the bottom side. So there is a bit of risk mitigation here. But you do end up losing everything in this red triangle. So the further it goes down, the bigger the loss you're going to have. So you will feel this loss. This will be a portfolio of shares that you got assigned because you sold an option. So you're going to feel this loss. So investors are willing to pay you to be able to sell you shares when the stock price gets low. Why is that? Because they're going to get rid of this risk, but they're going to have the value here if the stock price goes up. So at the end of the day, they are paying you a premium for the ability to mitigate this red triangle. So you are taking on, as the option holder, as the one who sells the put, you are taking on the risk in this red triangle. And they're willing to pay you a premium to do that. So let's take a look at the calls because the chart will look different on that. So as we talked about in the portfolio update, I sold a covered call on on Best Buy, I have 100 shares of that sitting in the dividend income account. I'm selling covered calls on that. They gave me a premium of $62.31. The return on that is about 50% on an annualized basis. So that's pretty good. But what are they paying me for? Why is that such a, a good deal? Why is there a big reward for that particular option? And you'll notice here that the strike price on this option was $66. And the stock price at the time I entered into the option was $64. So let's move to this slide here. You can see that the strike price is $66. That means that if it hits $66, I'm going to sell them my shares for $66. So as the market price goes up, I no longer get that gain. So it basically flattens out here. I no longer have the shares. I did capture the premium. You can see the difference here. That's the premium plus the additional $2 per share. So you can see if it doesn't hit 66, that I keep the shares. And if it goes down to 54, then I'm experiencing a loss here. If I were to have bought the option at the time, and recall it was $64, I would have bought 100 shares at $64, and if the price went up, I would make money. If the price went down, I would lose money. So as you can see here, there's very little downside mitigation here. I mean, that's basically the premium that I got. However, as the market price goes up, I get to capture that between 64 and 66 before the shares get assigned. So as the shares then go up in value, it flattens out. So this green area here is mine, the yellow is the opportunity cost. So again, we want to find the sweet spot. The sweet spot is between 63 and some change and is uh, just below 67 here. So as long as it trades in this range, then I could do this all year long and make some pretty good return on these covered calls. The problem is, is that if it breaks out and it starts shooting up, then I lose these shares. And the person who's on the other side of the option will get my shares at $66. And as the price goes up, they will capture this. Now, I won't feel this because I no longer have the shares and I got my premium here plus the $2. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. The person who bought the option is feeling pretty good about it. But I'm still open because I have all of this risk that I'm taking on. So the person who bought this option doesn't have to buy my shares unless it hits 66. 
So if it stays below 66, then I hold the shares. If it drops down to 54, then I have all of this loss that I'm that I'm carrying. So the person is willing to pay me a premium to carry this downside risk for them. And that's what options are all about. They are about someone paying me to cover this downside risk in both models. Now, I realize this is pretty technical, but the one thing you need to remember is the value of the option. The reason they're willing to pay you to enter into either a covered call or a cash secured put is that you are taking on the risk of the stock declining. So why does this matter? Why are we even going through this? I wanted to share with you at least some of the things I've learned so far about mitigating risk for options. So first of all, I got five things for you. One is that we only sell puts for stocks that we want to own at that price. So do your due diligence. Understand what price you're willing to pay for a stock. And if it hits that price, then you're okay owning it anyway. When you're selling calls, be sure that you are willing to sell that stock at that price. If you don't want to sell that stock and it goes above that price, then you're going to be chasing this thing and it's going to cost you more money than you want. The third thing is to use weekly or at most bi-weekly uh, expiration dates. And I found that by limiting the time frame in this, it's a little easier to manage and the risk that you're taking is over a much shorter period of time. A couple of other things is that as, you, as we all get better with options, we will know when it's appropriate to roll options. I'm not going to talk about that today, but just recognize that that is a potential for risk mitigation. And then the fifth thing is decide ahead of time when and if you plan to buy your options to close. So if you capture most of your premium before the expiration date, sometimes it's best just to buy that thing back and, and start again because most of the value has been squeezed out of the transaction. So options can be a great addition to any portfolio. But what I wanted to share with you today, and it's something that I don't hear anybody talk about on YouTube, is what are the risks and why am, are they willing to pay me to enter into that option. If you're going to do options, you need to understand that. And I need to understand that. So hopefully that's been helpful for you. I learned a lot this week about the risk of options. And I just wanted to share that with you just so that maybe it would be helpful uh, as you develop your portfolios moving forward. So if you're still with me, I appreciate you staying on through all of that technical stuff. If you uh, wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, uh, and if you're not a subscriber yet, I would love for you to subscribe. I'd love to have you along for the journey. Now, not every week am I going to talk about options, but you know, this week, since it was the first week for the options account, I thought that would be kind of fun to do. So I'm going to get out of your hair, and I will see you on the next video.